We should be excited because we're going to start throwing fireballs here in a second. Yeah. Right? There we go. Did you catch that? And I know, I'm going to address the elephant in the room right away. What do fireballs have to do with running a business and particularly with onboarding? So we're going to get into that. Stick with me. We're going to tie it all together. All right. So this goes back to the sales process. When you're selling somebody your product or your service, we're all business leaders in here, or we're doing some capacity in a business, and it really comes back to your sales. Because when we're selling somebody something, we're, we think we're selling them a product, but what we're actually selling them is a better version of themselves. And what I mean by that is if you buy my product, so let's take RevRoad, for example, our services, you're going to be able to throw fireballs. So it's not about how awesome my service is or how great you know, the people we associate with are. It's a how great you're going to be because you were smart enough to do business with me. And that's what we're selling people, right? We don't necessarily make, we make that product, but that's not we're sell, what we're selling. What we're selling to that customer is them being, having that ability to throw fireballs, okay? And so that's what we're talking about. And right before I came up here, the do you want to throw fireballs, I was singing it in my head, and now you all will too. Do you want to throw a fireball? rest of the day. You'll do that tonight when you're going to sleep. All right. So why Mario? Why fireballs? Uh, in particular, why we're talking about onboarding. Um, because this is essentially, when you're onboarding a customer, it's their chance to learn to use their newfound superpowers, right? If you do it right, they're going to be saving that uh, mushroom kingdom in no time. And this goes back to Nintendo, because Nintendo back in the 80s, they were masters at onboarding people. And if you think about it, and you think particularly about Mario, three lessons we learned from uh, Nintendo and how they did things. So, and they were very intentional about this too, and, and Greg's gonna get up here and talk about this, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail about this. But um, their Mario World 1.1, right? What did they do? They taught you how to play the game while you were playing the game. So you had a good time, and you were hooked right away. And it wasn't too difficult, but when you played that world, you knew exactly what you needed to do with Mario, which was run around, stomp on mushrooms, run up to blocks, uh, jump under blocks, and then finish the level. So you were hooked right away, and it was easy to kind of get through that, learn the game, now you're hooked, let's go on to level two. So that's one of the lessons they learned about onboarding, is teach the game by playing the game, okay? Second lesson is that you need to design for the naive user. This comes from when they first started developing these games, right? It was kind of a new industry that they were putting up there. So they had to hook you right away, get you um, almost addicted to it, right? We talked about uh, video game users. But they got you hooked in. When they first started developing these things, it was the, de it was the coders, the developers. They would work on the game, then they would play the game, and they would work on the game and play on the game. And they got really good at it. So they kept making it harder and harder, which if you're a new player, turns you off immediately, right? That first level, you die, you're out, that's no fun. So when you're designing that onboarding experience, you gotta make sure, you gotta remember, this is a new user. It's not me or Greg, like from my experience, I know how this works. It's somebody that doesn't know how it works. So that's the second lesson. Third lesson is to keep that user progressing. You wanna hook them right away so that they'll continue on that journey of that game that you've built, that service you're selling, that product you're selling, to keep that customer coming back and, and going through it. All right, and the purpose for me going through this is I'm kind of setting the groundwork, right? I'm describing the problem, why it's so important, and then we're going to have Greg come up, and he's going to tell you how to do it and do it successfully. Okay, so why is it so important? It sets the tone for your ongoing relationship because you're no longer in a sales relationship. Now you're in a working relationship, so you want that customer to feel like they made the absolute right decision. Now I have superpowers. I'm throwing fireballs because this guy, because I bought this person's product. And that's where we want to get them to. So that sets the tone, that onboarding, because it's the first thing that they're going to do. It turns new users into raving fans, which we all want. We want those high Google reviews. We want referrals. We want word of mouth, because that helps you sell again into the future. Uh, reduces churn. You spend a lot of time selling that person that they could throw fireballs. So you don't want them to throw a fireball and then have that experience like, well, that wasn't so great, like my little stage props, right? Wasn't totally awesome. You want them to just have that great experience. I'm going to stay with this, with this company, this product forever. It increases your customer lifetime value, which is what we're always trying to do as businesses. We get a customer in the door. We want to be able to maximize revenue, create value for that customer and for our business. 
uh, retention lowers acquisition costs and increases revenue. Those are two numbers we should always be aware of in our businesses. So that acquisition cost is that sales time, that sales cycle of trying to get and attract that customer in. So if we can reduce that because we keep customers longer, that's a good feeling. Oh, now that is our uh, presentation power-up moment. <laughs> and this is the moment where we go to our uh, crack RevRoad analyst, Seth Robinson over there, where he gets to just give us nuggets of wisdom. So Seth, what do you think about onboarding? So as an analyst, I'm always looking at trying to figure out what's the fastest, cheapest, and easiest way to increase revenue. And you're onboarding your existing customers, it really doesn't get faster, cheaper, and easier. Keeping the customers you already have is going to be much lower hanging fruit than finding new customers. And so taking your onboarding process just as seriously as you're taking your sales team and your sales, um, your, your sales resources is going to be just as, it's, it's going to be a bigger payoff because they're already, the sales have closed. There you go. Thank you, Seth. Appreciate that. That's our, our presentation power-up moment. So let's get back to, and let's get some statistics as to what Seth was saying there. So if you, you can lose 75% of your new users within the first week. Okay, so some of these stats come from like SaaS companies, and that's usually what we think about is a, is a SaaS product or a subscription model. But it could work for product companies too, right? You sell them that product once, it's much easier to sell them another product that's in your, in your offering. So you want to keep those customers happy and in there. They want to buy that product, and they want to think that I'm throwing fireballs now, okay? 40 to 60% of free trial users will use your product once and never come back. So do remember that as you're offering those freemium models. You want to make that such a good experience that, okay, now I'll give them money because what they have given me allows me to have superpowers. The most revenue comes from existing customers. That goes right back to what Seth said. You got that person already sold. They're giving you money. It's much easier to keep money coming from them because you're providing such great value for them. And happy customers become your top referral sources, which, again, goes back to those sales, and it makes much easier sales. Okay, so hopefully I did a good job of laying that groundwork, that onboarding is super important. It is a problem, something we need to be very aware of. And now I'm going to bring up an expert to tell you how to be successful at it. So, Greg, here you go. Thanks, Jason. Well, I'm super grateful to be here uh, and talk onboarding. It's something I'm very passionate about. I've spent over 15 years of my career really helping companies maximize their onboarding experiences and maximize their customer experience. So Jason did an awesome job talking about the value and really what you get out of a good onboarding experience. And I'm actually going to extend that to a good customer experience. Um, and so it, we're all kind of smart people in this room, so hopefully we can all agree that customer onboarding is one of, if not the most important process within your organization. Um, because you're going to get these values, the value of lower churn. You're going to keep a customer for life. Their share of wallet will go up, right? And holding on to your customers creates a healthy business. It'll help you grow faster than you could ever grow if you have to keep plugging the holes in the bucket. So let's talk about, let's talk about how, we, how we can do this. Um, I want to talk about just three simple things, and I want to get you to start thinking about onboarding in maybe a little bit of a different way. And there are a couple things that I think are critical that all the companies that I've gone, gone in and talked to, they miss a couple key elements of what customer onboarding and these customer relationships need to look like. So number one, uh, I'm a huge fan of Groundhog Day. I don't have jokes, and so I'm going to let videos be my jokes for me today. Um, but this illustrates, I think, really well what we're talking about in those first moments of customer onboarding. <laughs> Watch out for that first step. It's a doozy. <laughs> okay, you can only make a first impression one time, right? And so if you don't understand what that first impression needs to be for your customers, that first step can be a doozy. Uh, and customers will leave. And here's what's interesting about customers. A lot of times they will leave very quietly. So you have to understand how to be intentional in providing a good onboarding experience. So if we can agree the onboarding and the onboarding process is one of the most important processes you have, why would you ever leave that to chance? A lot of companies that I've talked to, they, I, I go in and say, well, it just kind of happens. Well, it never is going to happen well 
if that's the attitude and the approach we take. You have to be intentional. You have to be thoughtful in how you design your onboarding process. And not only that, you have to design the details. Okay, the details are what are is what is going to create a unique and positive experience with your business, with your customers versus a high level, hey, I know I have to have a, a kickoff call. Um, for those of you who are in SaaS, we have a kickoff call and it just kind of happens. Well, I can tell you right now, a kickoff call can go wrong in a hundred different ways. So if you don't design the detail and then you hand over this special process to someone else to execute, it can go wrong. Design the details. Understand that it's the details that make and break the experience for your customer. You have to design those out. The important things happen in the beginning. So during customer onboarding, I say there are three important pieces that happen during customer onboarding. And two of those happen at the very beginning. One of the biggest ones is the transition from sales to your post-sales teams or individuals. And I think Scott was here. He talks about that transition between sales and onboarding. The interesting thing is your customers have gone through this amazing process. And it's, all, it, by the way, it's 90% emotional. They're excited to throw fireballs. They're excited to have a superpower and get the value that you just promised that you're going to give them. And so you have to understand that at those critical moments at the very beginning will make or break the rest of your process. And not only the rest of that process, but the rest of your customer's success. Customer empathy, and I love that these guys came up and talked about having empathy and being able to recognize and connect and really understand who you're dealing with. Your customers are your relationships, and those relationships are fostered by understanding your customer. You have to have empathy, um, and you have to understand that you're dealing with humans. People do business with people that they know, that they trust, and have a relationship with. And then understand the execution. So you can be the smartest person in the room and be also be the best onboarding person in the room. At some point, you can't do it all. And you're going to have to hand this over to be executed by somebody else. So even though you know, like the back of your hand, how to run this process, if you don't design it in a way that a new person that you hired yesterday can't come in and execute like you execute, then you've designed it wrong. You haven't done what you need to do to be able to have these individuals execute the way you would execute and care for your customers the way you would care for your customers. All right, this transparency, this is actually called the post-sales dip. You will hear, if you talk to any customer experience individual, you'll hear about the post-sales dip. And it happens all the time. And it happens to everyone. You can't necessarily avoid it, but you can minimize the dip that takes place. And the biggest key that, that they have found to minimize the, the post-sales dip, because it is an emotional dip, is to communicate. So if you can communicate, I mean, we live in a world now where I can't even order a pizza without knowing when they're putting the pepperoni on my pizza, right? I had an experience uh, over Christmas. I bought a 3D printer on Amazon. Who buys stuff on Amazon and checks the tracking when you buy it every day? Because I do. <laughs> I do, because I need to know that it's coming. You get excited, right, about something coming, and you need to know it's coming. I also had another experience. I bought something off eBay, and I checked and it said, oh, it's shipped. The next day happened, nothing changed on the status. The next day happened, nothing changed on the status. The next day happened, nothing changed. Two weeks later, nothing had changed. What did I do? What would you do if you purchased something and you didn't get communication that it was coming? freak out. And so I called up eBay. I said, hey, this is a fraudulent purchase, and I canceled my purchase. Guess what came two days later? <laughs> okay, communicate. Because here's what happens. It is very emotional. And if you don't communicate with your customers, all of a sudden, doubt starts to creep in. And the emotional pieces that start to spiral them to a churn happen. You have to communicate. You have to communicate often, and you have to communicate uh, value, right? Even though they've already purchased your product, you have to continue to sell. Um, and the other thing I'll tell you is take credit. What a lot of people that I talk to, what they don't realize is that all the effort that you're putting into onboarding a customer, that's value. That's value. If you're not communicating the work that you're doing to your customer before they even get the product, that is value. Communicate and take credit for what you're doing. Be transparent. A lot of people are scared to be transparent of what is going on, but you can actually turn it into a huge positive. All right, 
we're going to cruise through this. Salam alaikum. Alaikum salam. How many of you guys have found yourself in this situation? Okay, real quick. This is probably the most important thing that I can tell you. Most people think that customer onboarding happens when you deliver the product to the individual. It does not. Customer onboarding is done when your customers receive the value that you promise to give them. It doesn't come from just dropping a product in their lap and saying, hey, good luck. You will lose every time. You have to get them. It doesn't end until they get the value that you provided. Design a plan to value. Don't just design a plan to drop a product on their lap. And never stop selling value, ever, ever. I don't care if you have a plan for the next year with a customer. Every time you have a, a conversation with that customer, resell the value. Resell the value, and, and it'll go a long way. So I don't know how many of you guys have ever done this where you hammer a nail at the, the end of a screwdriver. Just please raise your hand so I know I'm not the only one if you've ever done that. Okay, thank you. It's brutal, right? And here's the, here's the unfortunate thing. You're all very smart, and I have no doubt right now that you can go in front of your computer and you can create the most amazing onboarding process on the planet. That's not the hard part. The hard part is how are you going to get your teams to execute now on that plan? I've created hundreds of journey maps that never got executed. That is the hard part. And that's why we created Affinity Canvas, because I couldn't find the tool. If you're using spreadsheets, if you're using hack CRMs, if you're using hack uh, process management tools and, it's, and you're struggling with it, welcome to my world. And this is why we created Affinity Canvas, an intentional product that allows you to do everything that we just talked about and actually get the value that you're looking for from a good onboarding experience. So we're happy to talk to you. Um, Again, we're, I'm with Affinity Canvas, so if you want to scan this or go to our website, affinitycanvas.com, we'd be more than happy to kind of show you the product that we've got as well as answer any questions. Uh, I usually work with my customers quite a bit on uh, helping them answer uh, how they can solve some of these problems with customer experience and customer onboarding. So thanks, everybody.